for is checking validity or checking consistency, like satisfiability or uh, equivalence. So I'm just going to I'm going to do one as though we're checking the validity of an argument. Okay. And All right. what we do is just start writing the premises um, as sort of the trunk of the tree, assuming the tree is like upside down. Um, so at the top and putting them saying of them that they're true. So the point when we're checking for the validity of an argument, we're going to uh, suppose that all the premises are true and the conclusion is false. Mm -hmm. And if we find a branch on the tree that's open, it's like there's still a way to satisfy it. There's no contradiction. Then the argument's going to be invalid. But if we can quote unquote close all the branches and you'll we'll see how that happens, then there's no way to satisfy all the premises being true and the conclusion false, which means the argument's valid. Right? That's like saying mm -hmm. it can't be the case that all the premises are true. And you said these can be used for to test a range of features. So like validity, what else did you say? Consistency. Um... And equivalence too is, is an interesting one, but you use, you use two trees for that. It's yeah. pretty straightforward. It's pretty straightforward to test for logical equivalence because it, Say you have two, and just four, let, uh, let me let me just be clear before you even say this. So by equivalence, we're talking about two uh, like WFFs that are what they have the same truth values in all for all truth values of the variables. Like, is that what you mean? Yeah, essentially, the biconditional holds between them. Okay, now sorry, I'm I'm a bit weird with equivalence. It just so like if we have. What's that one uh, law? Is it material implication where it's like P implies Q, so like not Q or P? Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. So those are those are equivalent, right? Right. And what it means for them to be equivalent is just that. I mean, I I, I just think of it with respect to truth tables. If we drop the truth tables, they'll have the same. Uh, they'll have same the same truth, truth assignments. Yeah. Right. Which is just to say that by conditional holds between. Them. And then consistency is just when there is at least one row in the table where both are true? Yes. Or okay. Both, or it could be you're checking the consistency of any number of, of statements or formulas, right? Mm -hmm. So we could yeah, say... Yeah, yeah, of course. And, uh, and all we do there is set, set all the formulas to true, and if there's an open branch at the end, then they're consistent. Or there's a way to satisfy them. Sorry. They're satisfied. Okay. Um, yeah, let's do some trees. So, it might take me a minute to remember how to set it. Okay. What is this app you're using here? Is this like a, just a tree generator kind of thing? No, well, I'm using um, Overleaf. It's a LaTeX. Uh, have you heard of LaTeX? Nope. Well, you should. <laughs> it's great for writing documents, writing math, uh, uh, all sorts of stuff. And hmm. writing, uh, I have some good way to write proofs in here too. Like, I like guess it's, it's it's just great for a lot of things, and you can install new packages um, that, uh, like, for example, Forest is the package I'm using right now to do the trees. Um, but um, uh, this clearly well, this, requires like programming knowledge or something, though. There's some, but. Well, you can always get, <laughs> you can always do more with it, which would require more programming knowledge. But for the basics, like you really don't need to know very much at all. Mm, like there's okay. certain there's certain syntax like where you start a new section, type in backslash section, and like title your section, and then just produces that. Well, I found um, I found a good tree generator online also, so you can always. Play oh, really? That. Yeah. Is that? Do you want to see? Uh, Not well, we can put it on later. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what was I saying? So, this should compile. All right. So, I've started drawing a tree. I just put just implication as the first premise. We're going to do just check the validity of modus ponens. <laughs> Okay, and, and why a, do you have a T outside of the P 
and play as Q? Just saying of this formula that it's true. And oh, I'm gonna say that okay. I'm gonna say that for the premises that they're both true and then that the conclusion's false. And we're gonna drive a contradiction. Okay. So and that's um, if all the branches close, we get a contradiction on each branch, then the formula is gonna be the argument's gonna be valid. Uh, okay. I think this is how I do it. Too. Wait, this is wrong, isn't it? Uh. Um, it could it could be useful for us to play with the same generator, so I'm able to fuck around with it later. Yeah, if you want to. Um. How good is that generator? <laughs> well, I mean, it seems to be working fine. Here, let me uh, let me put it in general. So you have to use their exact symbols up there, and for uh, for therefore, it's just um, a straight line thing, and then an equal sign like this. Here, put a put modus ponens in general. Um, and it's it seems to generate trees fine. It can handle things in first order logic and modal logic. Apparently, I, I'm told that trees, or I read that trees are the most common proof method for modal logic. It's uh, it's very useful in modal logic because, uh, well, it can be a lot quicker and more efficient. Yeah, How I many steps some... are they supposed to take? Sorry? With this tree proof generator? Well, the I, amount of steps I probably assume... varies per argument, right? Well, there's no fixed amount of like the amount of steps you take um, can depend. Uh, <laughs> there's more and less efficient ways to uh, complete the steps on a tree, and we'll, we'll see that as the case. Um, especially if you're doing, you'll you'll see that you'll have some options when when breaking down a tree um, of which premises to use first, and using the ones that don't split first it's going to be more efficient because it should be less than a million right yeah yeah i mean <laughs> um, so, so uh, yeah why don't you why i just want to that? understand what we're looking at here so what am i looking at when i look at this uh tree for modus bones yeah so this is more or less what i was going to build um except so, and the gate the conclusion on line three. Um, uh, you cut out for a second. I assume you just said it gives the premises on line one and two and the uh, and negation the, of the conclusion the on line, conclusion. Three. line three. Yeah. Okay. So in my syntax, I would say true first premise, true second premise, false third premise. Um, uh -huh. Or false conclusion, or do we false cue? But you can do it like this. It's, it's sure. expressing the same thing. Um, <clears throat> and then... Any of the premises that have connectives in them, um, mm -hmm. logical connectives, except for the negation in this case, but would include the negation in mine. Um, the negation is not really a connective, right? Well, it's an operator, whatever. Okay. Um, so I, correct me if I'm wrong. I think of connectives as the subgroup of operators that connect to operands. Right. Yeah. Right. That's correct. Um. So. What they're doing is when this the three splits into two branches, all they're they're breaking down the first premise and saying, Okay, what are the ways this can be satisfied? Well, one way that's satisfied is is if P is false, so that's one branch, and the other way is satisfied is if Q is true. That's the second branch. That's all they're doing from line one to four. Um, they're just splitting the conditional into the two possibilities to satisfy. Wait, I don't, sorry, one, so I understand that the conditional will come out true if P is false. False antecedent always makes a conditional come out true. Right. But I don't understand how, oh, wait, okay, yeah, because if Q is true and P is false, it'll be true, and if, sorry, one second, if Q is true and P is false, it'll be true, and if Q is true and P is true, it'll be true. Yeah, yeah, so, if Q yeah, is true... So true Regardless if q is true, true it's yeah, q exactly. if p is false 
Yeah. Right. Wait, now I just need to I, I need to rethink about basic shit just because this is a new thing for me. So obviously it'll be false if P is true and Q is false. But yeah, we don't have that there. Okay, yeah, so it's yeah, it's gonna be true if P is false and it'll be true if Q is true. Yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna write out the same proof in my syntax. And what does it mean by the little ones in brackets beside those two branches? And what do the X's mean? The one is just saying that um, this is taken from, this is oh, it's done yeah. from line one. Gotcha. And the X's mean we have a, a, a contradiction, or like we can close the branch. branch. Oh, OK. Wait, we have a, so, yeah. Sorry. So if one of those branches uh, we couldn't place an X there. There's no notice that Q contradicts with line three and not P contradicts with line two, right? So mm -hmm. on each sort of branch of the tree, we can look up the tree and see that there's a contradiction. Mm -hmm. So that yeah, means we I can close that branch. I follow that. I guess I don't understand the whole idea of why we're creating a branch like that. I'm so yeah so I, I like I, I get I get the general idea of what some of this is so like you have the first premise you have the second premise and then you have the conclusion being false and then the first premise is the one with an operator in or a connective in it and we've shown the two conditions where that premise comes out true and we've shown that both of those conditions will negate um, an earlier st proposition. An earlier is. statement. Yeah. 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 Okay. No, as as it's going to be important that it's you can look up the tree from that branch and find the contradiction. So mm -hmm. sometimes the trees get very complex. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be enough to say, oh, this there's a statement on some other branch that contradicts it. It has to be like ancestral to it in the tree, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to look up the, well. Yeah, it has to be up above. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what's on here. Um, compile. Mm. Oh, I'm, I'm just okay. All right. So this is this is how I would have done the same tree. Mm -hmm. Um, I just put a little contradiction sign, or whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, the bottom. Mm -hmm. Uh. And it's it's kind of it's doing the same thing, having the true or false uh, sort of uh, statement outside of the proposition, uh, outside of the formula, or just saying negation when it's false and just leaving it. But whatever, you see, I kind of like it like this because it's easy to see um, yeah. that these are your two premises that you set the true and whatever. Yeah, I, I can see how this um, relates to the the other model. The difference is is small. Yeah. It's just in yeah, how it's, you're, it's how the same, you're framing it's, things. It's the same Instead thing. of writing not Q, you're saying Q is false. Yeah. It's kind of it's a bit neater because you don't have to actually modify what one of the premises or conclusion looks like. You can just write them exactly how they are and then just put true right. values that are obviously going to be a problem if it's valid. Okay. Or, so yeah, sorry. maybe it's useful to. It's probably a good idea. So you, I think you have the basic idea, but. Um, it would be probably useful to go over what are the rules for dealing with all the different like connectives. Like, what do we do when we have? So yeah, you see, when we had this conditional, we branch it like this. And before before even doing what what do we do with all the different connectives? Why exactly does this establish validity? I don't I don't understand that. So. Um, you can tell the argument's valid, but I'm just thinking of the truth table to tell it's valid. I, I'm not able to understand from a truth tree. Like, if we, if you were to give some argument that I didn't already know was valid going in, then I would not be able to understand from the tree why it's uh Right. Valid. So we have to just consider what we're doing here. Um, remember we said the premise is true and the conclusion falls. Mm -hmm. um, we're essentially, essentially, what we're doing is breaking down all those premises Um and exploring all the ways that they can be true, right? Mm -hmm. So, 
So once we've broken down everything to just um, oh single proposition, sorry, Troy, it might it might have just clicked when you said that. So yeah, I, I think I think I have an idea now. Please correct me because I still won't say it quite right. But yeah, it's like you're setting all the premises to true. You're setting the conclusion to false, and then you're exploring all of the possibilities that could make those premises true and showing that all of those exactly. possibilities generate a contradiction with something already established in the argument. Right. Okay. We right. Break, as that we break everything sense, down, there, we would expect to get a contradiction on each branch if the argument's valid. Right. Um, yeah. So if, if we don't get a contradiction on each branch, like there's some branch where it's like, oh, look, at there's a way this way satisfies all the premises in the conclusion negated and there's nothing more to break down and there's no contradiction so that would mean that the argument's invalid it's like we have a way to make the conclusion false oh okay okay the, the yeah so i i i think i have a way better idea now so yeah please please continue all right uh well so this so this gives us an idea of what to do with um uh conditional, so I'll just erase all these. The important thing to note is um, when you're doing when you're breaking down a conditional into false antecedent to consequent like this, you have to do this on every open branch. So in this case there's only one branch, like the, the trunk, so we only split once. But if there were, say, two branches on the tree, we have to We'd have to do this on both of those branches, assuming that um, the conditional occurs before the split. But yeah, like if if that conditional were made up of two smaller conditionals, then both of those conditional, like if P and Q were instead each their own conditional <laughs> statement, then you, there would be multiple conditions that could satisfy or not satisfy those conditionals that are a subpart of the original conditional. So you'd get like more branches. You would get more branches. That's not exactly what I'm saying, but um, oh, okay. you, you would get more branches there. But we'll, we'll, we'll sorry. Um, okay, so this is the the basic rule for conditional. Mm -hmm. um, we'll do one for uh, conjunction, I guess. Conjunction is pretty straightforward. Um, let me just look at that for a second. Conjunction. Oh, that's that's kind of weird. Oh, wait, it just wait. wait. I haven't, I like, haven't, I haven't done it. I haven't finished it yet. <laughs> sorry, I was looking at. I, I was just looking at the combination of half of the conjunction thing and and then the the implication one. I was like, what the fuck am I looking at? For conjunction, you don't have to split. You just on two in your lines. You write two. Oh, okay. How do I put a shit? Uh... So the second one here is conjunction. Yeah, I'm just running some of these on my own over here. Um, conjunction, yeah, of course. It's pretty straightforward, yeah. You just yeah. take each of the conjuncts, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we'll do disjunction. Disjunction you have to split um, because Two ways to make it true that are independent of each other. So, uh, um, okay, I'm still. Yeah, I see conjunction. I see the implication. Yeah, the distinction should should be should render now. Oh, oh, hang on. Actually, I, I didn't actually. So there's, there's this is disjunction. You just either this one's true or this one's true. Yeah. Mm, wait. See the it weirds me out a bit. So, yeah, it'll be true if either is true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Uh, 
Let's do... Jacob, you got to mute your mic, please. Thanks. We'll do... Uh, by conditional here. Uh, so this is the body condition looks. Does this one kind of make sense? <laughs> um, yeah, so if they're both true or if they're both false, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So sure. we have one branch where they said they're both true or both false. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and I guess this last one isn't, you know, I included for completion, but uh, should be pretty obvious. In fact, the other trees, the other syntax won't have a rule like this, but hang on. Okay. But it's really straightforward. And there's there's rules for first order logic too and mortal logic and I don't know yeah that that's that, basically what I want to understand how to do it with first order logic. Yeah, so yeah, for sure. We'll get there. Because it's what I'm kind of looking at is it kind it kind of looks with first order logic like it just you know if you put a universal statement it just instantiates it and then does the same kind of thing as it would do with mm -hmm. something in prop logic. But yeah, I'd want to understand the details. Yeah, so this the third one is just negation. Robbie's just obvious, but but note that we only need to do this one because of my syntax. The other, like the tree proof generator, won't yeah. have. Mm -hmm. Stuff like this right. because it doesn't have this tree. Yeah, right. But actually, this is this well, is everything. It, sorry, why would the tree the tree proof generator surely would have that right? Because last one. Yeah, because it's still it'll it can still handle negations. You can still put negations into it. It just it, with the right. But, but you wouldn't have. You, you, there's no statements like true not p. It, it would only be not double negation p or something like that. So yeah, I guess. But... Sorry. No, I just don't understand why that would, like, what happens if I put in not p? Well, it's not going to do anything. It just gives a counter model. It just says counter model when p, p. is true. Yeah, but. <laughs> it also, it calls it invalid, which is strange because it's not an argument. Right. Well, I, maybe it's supposing that you, you have no premises and that's your conclusion or something. But in worst case, it's just checking whether it's a tautology. <laughs> mm. um, okay. So these well, are so yeah. these are all the main ones. Um, but there's also the case where they're false, right? Um, okay. Well, uh, I... like what might be helpful is because you've given me some idea actually what I'm looking at now. I almost just want to test some arguments and just get you to explain the trees to me. So I well, can yes, but, but um, let's just quickly run through the five cases where these are just false instead of true. Oh, okay. Should be should be pretty quick, and maybe you can um, before I just write it out, you can just uh, tell me what you think it would, we would do. So I'm going to set the false conditional uh, five time. I set this up. I would put it next to it, but I don't feel like it makes sense. so. And uh, give it a sec. All right, false conditional. What, what do we do? Is it split? I think that the the like satisfaction that? conditions will just be opposite. Meaning? Um, okay, so if it's a conditional, then it's true if p is false uh, or if q is true. So now it'll be true if uh, q is false or if p is true. Not quite, not quite. Very close. It's true if it's it's false if p is true and q is false. One second. Let me think about that. 
sorry i just need to i need to look at a fucking truth table for that what so sorry the statement is it's false that it's just if p, p implies q. q right right that's just so, saying the condition is false right yeah, yeah but wait isn't sorry now i'm tripping out for a second isn't that just going to be so if we drew up a truth table for a conditional statement whatever those truth values are the conditional is if if we change it to the conditional is false Aren't we just going to get the opposite, um, the opposite truth values there in the truth table? Right, but that doesn't mean we just uh, take the opposite truth values on this branch here. Yeah. Okay. So what we're looking at what would sat what would make the conditional true, right? What would make it? False? What makes the conditional true is at, at least one of the antecedent consequent of true. That's what we. Sorry, not not at least. What am I saying? That's the either the the antecedent is false. Or the conclusion is true, yeah, or both. But, yeah. Okay, so let's. It's it's a bit weird when you add the false in front. So it's that uh, that conditional. I mean, is just true if just P imagine as negation. Yeah. Q is true. Yeah, and it's gonna be false. Wait, what? I need to look at a tr at a truth table for that one second. Um, Yeah, okay, so that's when it's true. And now if we do the negation. Yeah, false, false, true, false. True, true, false, false. That's what I thought. Wait, so this will come out true. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. So it'll come out true if P is true or if... No, not if Q is false. It'll come out true if P is true, and it'll come out true. It's weird. It doesn't seem like there's just two things like that anymore. One second. Oh, wait. No, I'm fucking up. I'm an idiot. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it'll come out. Well, there's only... It'll only come out true in the one such wait sorry now i have to think are we drawing up the things that make it true or that make it false so with the or statement p or q wait can i look at that for a sec it's true if either is true so we're looking at what would make it true so this will only be what... true if both p oh so is it actually just one row and it's just if p is true and q is false right okay so yeah okay now i got you so you don't split, you just say... Yeah, no split. Because two things are required. Gotcha. Yep. In the splitting cases, you can have either as, as to satisfy the truth of it. But here you have, have to have both that the antecedents true and the consequence. Yeah, I think I think what I'm thinking of is not P implies not Q. Is that what I'm thinking of here? Uh, well, it depends on what you're saying. Sorry. <laughs> That'll be... It depends on if, that's, if that negation is on the whole... True, uh, if P is true. Uh, okay, well, whatever. We can not worry about that. Okay, so I understand, though, that, yeah, you're not going to split it. There's just the one condition where it's true, and it's when both P and Q are true. Wait, one second. Let me go back. <laughs> I've forgotten already. It's when P is true and Q is false. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's okay. when the conditional is false. Yeah. Oh, okay, and you've, all, you've also written it. Yeah, okay, I got you. Cool. Um, so I, I can figure out what the others would look like from this so like yeah if so we say it's that. false that p and q then oh i think we will need to split there so p and q is f it's true that p and q is false if p is false no yeah if p is false and also, if P is true and Q is false, so it's if Q is false, or if, wait, one second, sorry. No, 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 let me look at this. Yeah, so if P is false and if Q is false, those are both cases that would make um, not P and Q true. Mm -hmm. So it's two two branches, and one is P false, and one is Q false, right? Correct. Okay. 
it's just like this, yeah. Um, I'm not sure where you put that. One second. Right here. Um, I'm my spacing is messed I, up. I wish I could see your cursor on screen. Um, oh, it doesn't show. Can you no, see the it, highlight? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, the highlight. You can. There's a, probably a way to set it to show, but yeah, okay, sure, yeah. That's that's what I was saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's see the next one. What do we want to do? Maybe I can figure it out before you put it in there. But this disjunction, disjunction, disjunction. This is inclusive disjunction. So okay, so yeah. That... So I didn't. I'm not including exclusive or as a as a um, yeah, because it's derivative. as a connective here. But we can we can do that. I mean, we can construct a pretty well, simple. It, rule yeah, well. it would. Yeah, I can. Okay, so but with inclusive disjunction, that's false. That P or Q. So for that, we're just gonna have one it's only one branch and it's where both are false p and q exactly yeah you got it yeah okay all right i'll write it here for completion anyways but sure hmm this is interesting <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of cool to have a little tree method I, I like, yeah. so I'll just say this for a second. The thing I like about something like this is I'm not, I'm not a big fan of, of natural deduction. I don't like, I don't like the thought of just having a bunch of inference rules and then just like kind of drawing from them as seems like in whatever way strikes you as correct to like get down to your conclusion. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it works. It's great. Whatever. It's standard. I, I understand. But there's something nice and algorithmic about when you're just dealing with prop logic and you can generate like a truth table. And uh, who's talking? Sorry, <laughs> not not in the mood. Um, there's something nice about <laughs> about prop logic where you can just generate a truth table and it's like this one step and then the whole argument's kind of laid out before you and you can tell what's going on. There's something about natural deduction that kind of loses that, right? So I like the thought of something a bit more like algorithmic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah there's something algorithmic about it but at at times there's still choices you can make to <laughs> um mm, that make a difference for efficiency <laughs> okay All right. but <laughs> um and uh i guess just by conditional should be pretty straightforward Okay, so we have negate a biconditional now. It's negate a biconditional. Okay, one second. Or false. Um. Okay. I don't even know how to do a biconditional in this little truth generator. I mean, I guess I know when it's true. It's just easier to look at it. Okay, so it's only okay. So there's two conditions. Yeah, and it's when p is false and q is true, or when q is false and p is true. So two branches, each of them have one of the variables true and the other false. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, it hasn't quite rendered here yet. Why didn't it render? Did it not do it? Uh, I see it. No, it, okay, now it rendered correctly. It was showing false, false. Oh, okay. I didn't um, actually read all of it. I just saw it, yeah. <laughs> okay. And for completion, I'll do the negation one, although it should be extremely obvious. Negation of what? Oh, <laughs> just, <the last laughs> just yeah. double negation? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so obviously it's just when uh, when the variable is true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So that's that's actually all the rules for prop logic. So everything is everything you do is going to be some application of these rules. Um, okay. Can can we just do one that's going to make multiple yeah. branches? So let's do like, I'm just going to do hypothetical syllogism. And then mm -hmm. after, the, if this is all pretty straightforward, then let's do something in first order. Um, okay. Um, do, 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 do. Implication sign. Okay, so I'm just looking at what it's created for me here. I, I threw it in the proof generator if you're wondering what I'm looking at. Oh, okay. Okay, so... 
Now, let's see. Um, okay, what is it done here? So lines four and five are, those somehow relate to the conclusion. So let me think about that for a sec. Uh, I don't know, what are you, what are you looking at? Wait. Um, I'm looking at the tree tree generator's response to hypothetical syllogism. Oh, okay. All right, I'll start putting that in. Oh, yeah, those are the conditions that would wait. One second. P if P is true and not R is true. Wait a second. Then P implies R is false. Okay, so those are those are the conditions that would make this third line true. Right? Because if P is true and R is false, then P implies R is false. Yeah, so those are the conditions that would make the third thing true. So then what's happening here with this branch? What could make not R? Oh, that's, wait, what? Two, oh, this is dealing with two, line two here, I see. Yeah, yeah, okay. Sorry, you're cutting out for me. Oh, I'm I'm just I'm just looking over the truth tree. Are you looking at it also? Um, do you do you have the thing that I have open for a hypothetical syllogism? Because it's it's no, useful. I just I just started it's, writing it, but if I want you to for a second here, I'll just I'll just copy paste it so you don't have to you know plug in all the little signs and stuff just in general there. Um, I just want you to look at what I'm looking at for a second so we can because this is the one that I'll have access to. I won't. I think if you put a comma there, it'll fuck it up, because I won't have um, I won't have access to the leaf thing. Right. Okay. Uh, Just hit enter. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So I understand that lines four and five are what would make line three true. So what would make it true that the condition that the conclusion is false? The condition was false, yeah. So, but do you understand why? Because they could have done line one first, right? Why do you think they did? Why do you think it does line three first? It breaks that one down first. Um, because we want to assume that the conclusion is false and the premises are true, right? No, no, no. But you can do, you can break down the statements in any order you want. Like we could break down premise one first, and that would be a split. And then break down premise three later, which wouldn't split. I'm not but, sure. So why, no, why has it done that? Because it's more efficient, right? You'll have you if you can. You want to uh, break down the ones that don't branch first, um, because you'll have fewer branches or potentially fewer branches in your tree. Oh, so yeah, so that's the negation of a uh, of a conditional, and the negation of a conditional doesn't branch. Right. Yeah. Okay. Any of the ones that any of the ones that don't branch, those are the ones you want to do first, um, if you can, um, and then mm -hmm. after that you can do the branching ones. But it's going to be more efficient if you do the ones that don't branch first. So that's why it's it's good um, that it does line three first, and then and then it does line one. Or sorry, actually it does line it does line two first for some reason. I don't know why, but it doesn't matter. It, it, after this point, you can do line one or line two first. Okay, so so I understand that what it's done is it's taken... So I just want to verbally talk through what I'm looking at here and just butt in whenever I say something mm -hmm. that's wrong, okay? So mm -hmm. I understand that what it's done is it's just copied the first premise. So row one is just the first premise. Row two is just the second premise. Row three is the negation of the conclusion. Row four and row five are the truth values of the variables that would make the negation of the conclusion true, right? Correct, correct. Okay. And then the first branch is dealing with the second line. 
It's showing the two conditions that could make the conditional in line true, in, in line true, in line two true. And that is when R is true and when Q or when Q is false. Um, then we can see with at seven, uh, that's that's just they, we get a contradiction there because line five is not R. So if line seven is R, we get a contradiction. Then six, we're saying not Q. Um, I'm not sure why that branch is there. Why does why does that branch there? Give me one sec just to finish writing this tree. Okay. Oh, and I also put. Um... The way I learned it was, um, we put check marks on lines that we've used. Oh, I take, I take. Oh, the Gavin AMA. Yeah, well, I want to I want to learn the logic stuff more, but that will uh that will be funny, Troy. I do want to go over there and grill him. All right. Yeah. So this is how I would have done it like complete. Um Okay, let me So just okay. Look. So yeah, this so move is basically the same thing. Um Okay, the order is a little different, which is a little the, weird to me. But yes, that's the, that's. They did premise two first before premise one, but I split premise one first. It's the same okay. thing. It's just. Yeah. So I'll look at yours. Okay, so premise one is going to be true when p is false or when q is true. So if mm -hmm. p is false, that contradict. Oh, you just okay, it's back. Uh, if p is false, that contradicts line four, so you get a contradiction there. Mm -hmm. Now I don't understand why we branch off of q. Off of so well, when Q is true. So at this point, once we've done this branch, we say, okay, this branch closes, so we don't have to do anything more there. Once a branch Sorry, closes. Which, which branch? What do you mean, which this, branch? The one that has Can you this highlight one it? here. This one here. That, yeah, that branch is closed. Yeah, okay. Once we have a, yeah. We've yeah. already got a contradiction there. Yeah. So even if there's, so so at that point, I hadn't um, broken oh. down. Yeah, there's so, nothing to contradict Q at that point. So at this point, well, to can really complete the tree, as long as there's still either you get contradictions everywhere, or you, or you have to keep breaking down your formulas, right? And mm -hmm. it's, and I hadn't at this point I hadn't broken down the second premise, mm -hmm. right? So then I go to each open branch and apply the operation that we already um, find up here, right? So mm -hmm. this is the only open branch left. So under that, I branch it and say false antecedent, true consequent. Wait, so sorry, I don't understand why that, like, okay, it looks to me like if we were wanting to say, so we're looking at, at the branch where Q is true. I understand we've closed off the branch mm -hmm. beside it where P, where P is um, false. That gives us contradiction. But Q is true. We haven't, we haven't gotten our, we haven't closed that branch off yet. Mm -hmm. So it's. I thought that if the uh, that the condition that would make that true is just Q being true. I don't understand why it branches into two things. No, no, no. This is a, this true Q being true satisfies this branch right up to here, but we still have all some formulas up here that we haven't um, broken down in their to their possibilities. Like why, have, why does it branch off of the queue though? I don't understand that. The second branch there. No, no, the reason, the, these, these, on every open branch, you can, you have to apply this, the rule, right? From going from tr uh, true conditional to um, like false sentencing and true consequence. Because, well, I mean, here's the way I think about it, right? We have, um, at this point in the on, on the tree, right, we have six statements, right? Mm -hmm. Well, okay, I guess we can ignore the first one 
because we've already broken that one down here. We can ignore the second one because we've already broken that one down, or third one because we've already broken that one down here. So we really have four statements. We have the second premise, we have the fourth and fifth line, and the sixth line of the true queue. So we have this, 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 and this. But what we really want to do to check for consistency is break everything down into um, single sentence letters, into just a single proposition, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why we have these rules, right? That yeah. Sorry, I see, I see something about it now. Maybe I can ask it like this, and this will make it easier. Okay. I I see that what you've done with you see how there's two areas where it branches. There's the first where it branches into P and Q, and then there's the second where it branches into Q and R. That second branching there, I understand that those are the conditions that would satisfy the second line. But right. why are we drawing the conditions that would satisfy the second line? to branch off of the open branch uh, where Q is true. That I don't understand. Like, why Why is that there? Well, this that's just how we apply the... Sorry. I guess you're asking why... <laughs> I mean, this is the rule we apply, right? On every open branch, when, when you're simplifying... Um, when you're applying the rule, you, mm -hmm. you, branch, you, 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 you apply this on every open branch, right? So suppose it was this on on every open branch, we would write below that at the end of that branch, we'd write true pre and true q. If on uh, if if, oh. if this is the formula we're breaking down. Now, oh wait a sec, that might have so that's the procedure. Play. I mean, you may still be wondering, well, why does this procedure? Wait, um, no, I'm lost. Yeah. You may still wonder why this procedure like satisfies our goal of checking whether the argument is valid, right? But I mean. That's not. I don't think that's what I'm asking. I just don't understand why that procedure is being applied to. There's something really basic I'm missing here. I can tell that. Um, yeah. So when you have the maybe maybe I'll put it this way, right? When you have something like this, um, the true conditional. It's not always the case that right beneath that is where you apply the rule, right? Mm -hmm. You may break it down later in the argument. So there might be a whole bunch of stuff in between the statement and where it branches. But the point is, when you do apply the rule, right, that would branch, on every open branch, you have to apply it. So you have a branch on every, at the end of every open branch, it's gonna branch into two. Okay, um, now if we have one second, so. Just so here, just let me put it this way. Suppose this, uh, this branch here hadn't we hadn't gotten a contradiction. If this was still possible, we would have done the same branch on this side as well. And in fact, there's nothing incoherent with withdrawing the branch there. Uh, it's just the contradictions. Um, we've already derived the contradictions, so there's no need. But uh, as we get to more different examples, uh, the branching structure might become more obvious. But um, Um, yeah, I guess that, see, the thing that trips me out is I would know, I would know how to do everything you wrote there up to when we have that second branch to close off where Q is true. My, I would react to that by going, okay, when is Q true? It's true when Q is true. And then below that, I would just write Q true. <laughs> so there's something right, I'm not right, getting there. But you yeah. never, there's no, there's no rule to apply on just a sentence like, like just on a Q, right? A true Q. The, yeah. the, the point of the tree is we're only applying the rule on, well, whenever you have formulas of, of any of these forms, right? Where there's either a connective or when there's an operator in my So, case, why, so why are we applying anything at all to just Q? We're not applying it to Q. What are we we're applying, applying it? We're applying it to the second premise. Um, one second. Because at at this point, once we've we've branched from the first premise into false Q and true, or false P and true Q, right? That was from the first premise. Uh -huh. At that point in the tree, we had done the third line. We had broken down here. We had done the first premise. Oh, which we, we I, still I done think I second. get it, Troy. I and think which I means get it. Yeah. on every open branch, we have to branch into false Q and true R. 
Yeah, so I don't know if I can say this perfectly, but when the idea is like if we proceed through the steps and we get to that open branch where, you know, Q is true, then we we look at like, okay, which statements have we not broken down yet? And mm -hmm. we, we break them down and we see yeah. we see if that closes off that branch, right? So when you break down Q implies R, um, the conditions where that's true are when Q is false or when R is true. And then we get Q being false, which negates Q being true, and we can close that off then. Mm -hmm. Is that an mm-hmm, or is that a, I don't know what the fuck you're saying, Isaac? No, that was correct. They were just responding to his own message. Um, oh, okay. All right. Yeah, no, okay, I, I do I do follow that. Okay, that makes sense. So then the last the last branch there, you've just processed that final statement. And uh, yeah, we can both of those uh, result in contradiction. We already, here, yeah, contradicts, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So I do, I do understand that. Um, is so there? I'll... Can we look at like a really complicated prop logic tree, and then if I can understand that, let's look at first order. Sure. Okay. Um, I have some. I mean, because I, I did this in a class, and I have some practice problems here. Um, let's see. Let me see if I can just copy this. Uh, what this. class did you do this in? This wouldn't have been was, in a general. It was a logic. No, it was a logic class. Yeah, but it wouldn't have been just like a general logic thing. It must have been like this wasn't just like formal logic, right? Like this was some yeah, specific I mean, it was class. Mostly, well, the, the, literally the class was called Logic One. Um, really? That's a, yeah. that, I'm surprised you learned the trees in in just the basic logic class. I thought that they usually just teach like natural deduction and truth tables but okay yeah yeah and logic then, for dummies has a chapter on truth trees yeah mm -hmm. logic okay. two was more like metalogic stuff and whatever but anyway um uh okay i have this um, or a set of was, was this one? i also i want to do an invalid one i'm doing p implies q Oh yeah, I should check. Oh, Q, we should definitely do one that's invalid. Yeah. Therefore, P. Hmm. So the, it doesn't actually give me a tree on the truth generator. It just gives a counter model. That's kind of a really. Oh, that's unfortunate. So okay, but the way I do it, we'll, we will end up with the tree. Why would they do that? I Why don't whatever. know, but I can already picture. I think what it'll look like. So we'll we'll create a branch Which, for P. Sorry. Which one, sorry. Which okay. Which one did you do? Let's just do affirming the consequent. So it looks oh, like. Shit. Yeah. So we're just. It's kind of similar. Like we're just gonna create that branch off of, for the first um, line. P implies Q. It'll be false when P is. It'll be true when P is false and when Q is true, and then uh, P being false. Will that will be able to close that branch off because the conclusion of the argument is p. So if we set that to false, yeah, we've, we can close off that branch. Then the other will be where q is true, but we don't have any resources to say to find a contradiction there. So we have an open branch. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think I, I think I can actually just it. visualize it. I don't even know if you have to draw it unless you want to do a bigger one because I, I know what this will look like right now. And the idea uh, is just if you have a branch that's not closed off, then the argument isn't valid. Correct. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you can you can draw it if you think that'll be informative, but I think I actually get the idea. Hey wanna... Isaac, real quick. Yeah. Um. The Gavin McGinnis AMA has been an open VC for a while now. Oh fuck! I wanna. If you I wanna... want, if you want to, do, if you want to do that, you can come back in a few minutes if you want. <laughs> I do want to go grill him, but I all, I just want to look at what it does in first order logic. If, if you want to just Sorry, take just five, or ten, if you want to just take five or ten okay. minutes to see if you can get some questions. Out. Um, um, what was I doing here? Shit. Um, wait, where would we false? Um. Yeah, so, and it looks like to do it with first order logic, like I just I just put in a, a kind of modus ponens like thing in first order logic, like for all x, p of x implies q of x, you know, p of e, therefore q of e. And therefore q of e. It looks like all it's done is <clears throat> it, it set up the same kind of thing, first premise true, second premise true, conclusion false, 
Then in the fourth line, it looks like it just instantiated the uh, first premise, which was the universally quantified premise, mm-hmm. and then just did the same thing, right? It can show that it's got contradictions on the conditions that make that true, right? Like it's negating PE, it's negating QE. Right, so it's, it's going to have all the same rules, but then additional rules for dealing with the quantified statements. But it's more or less... And, well, there's a couple other complications because whenever you have a universal statement, um, you can't, you don't really apply it once. um, Because if we ever introduce a new uh, letter, say A, B, or C, you have to apply it again on each open branch. But anyway, we'll get to to that. Um, So this, I think this is right. This would just be the affirming the consequent tree. Mm-hmm. Um, and both branches are still open, right? So, wait, what? Oh wait, um, I did it wrong. No, there's did one. It, yeah, I, I did it wrong. Didn't already I? fucking up. Already, the master is surpassed by the apprentice. Look at look Damn. at what we have here. What did I do? And I did that shit in my brain. Um, um, it's it's the p it's the p line. That should be one second. So it's fault if p is false if q is true. And then, wait, what? Maybe you are right. P is false. Oh yeah, no, maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the apprentice failed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, wait, I don't yeah. see my. Hair. It seems no, right, I, right. I think you're right. <laughs> okay. It's just because I did it, set it up differently than theirs, right? Because I have false mm. P or whatever. Yeah. So you set the conclusion to false, and then this uh, conditional is true just if P is false or if Q is true, and there's nothing to negate either of those. Right. So okay. we have two open branches, so, which is at least one open branch, so it's invalid, yeah. Okay, you, you actually have massively helped with my understanding here. So I think that what I want to do at this point is I'm going to uh, play around with the generator and see if, if any of the rules that seems to apply with first order logic weird me out. And uh, if they don't, then that's probably actually sufficient. But then uh, if they do, I might come back to you and ask for more assistance. Well, okay. Why do you say that? Let me, uh, let me just pull up a example. You don't want to do it, or no? I mean, you're you're welcome to. Um, I'm trying to find it. I should have. I've, I've just I've put I've put in one or two in first order logic, and I can understand what it's doing here. Right. Um. Like, I mean, it, it looks like it just has the basic rules for instantiation and generalization, and it's just applying those rules before then doing the same kind of procedure. Yeah, more or less. Um, let me... There's a couple of other things you have to know, right? As it, um, but one, one second. Okay. Where, where, maybe in here? Let me just pull up an example. No. This one. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> it's it's so annoying that they would make a this great tree generator that when you've got something invalid doesn't show you the tree. <laughs> it just seems like That's such an really obviously annoying. bad way to make a generator. Yeah, but we basically see what something that's so good about this is we could like program this kind of thing into the bot and then get a proof method for first order logic into the server, which would be really nice and modal logic. That'd be um, sweet. Yeah, I, I think feel like it that would. would be difficult, but <laughs> maybe. Well, I mean, it's it's clearly doable because that this yeah. we've got yeah. generators. Because um, I I couldn't find. Um, like it seems like the natural de- like there are generators that can do natural deduction stuff, but they were they were weirding me out. Um, and this has a nice kind of straightforwardness to it. Mm. Um. Because my problem when I was trying to think of building a, a like how to tell Nathan to build a, a proof method for first order logic was it's just there's so many 
optional moves with natural deduction that I was like, fuck, right. I don't know how to lay out something procedural here. So this is probably a better direction to try to go is the tree proof stuff. Yeah, is there's fewer, uh, well, as it gets more complicated, there's, there's, there's more options, but still probably um, programmable. Uh, let's see. Wait, what? Uh... Yeah, here we go. Yeah, so I'll just copy this in as an example of a first order logic one. Yeah. This should just copy right. Okay, so let's uh, let's see what it's done here. Whoa, it just disappeared off yours. Oh, recompiling. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's so see. Here the argument was, uh, this is the first premise. Yep. Second premise, conclusion. Right? Wait, um, so you have the conclusion on the third line, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, wait, what do you, sorry, that tripped me out. Why do you have a, a asterisk slash A there? Right, so this is just the syntax that we used. Um, so the check mark is when you're finished for the premise and because you've broken it down and there's nothing yeah. more to do with that premise. Yeah. But for universal like, instantiations like... Uh, Universally quantified statements like this, where the yeah. main you have a for all x outside the rest of the formula, you can't really do that because in the case where you introduce another variable, right, or uh, in in the in the tree, you have to apply it again for that other variable. So if I ever had, say, another existential statement where I had to say, oh, well, I've already used a, so I have to use b down here, I would have to apply this again on b. Mm -hmm. Now, I never have to do that here, um, but in some proofs you do. Um, okay. Here, let me just get a better idea of what we're looking at on the screen. So, okay, just give me a sec here. Are you looking at mine or are you looking at something else? No, I'm, I'm looking at yours. I don't understand some of what you've done there. So line four and five, yeah, it's, it's just the conditional from line three. It's because this conclusion. This is just the conditional, right? It's a false conditional. Yeah. So, true antecedent, false consequent. I can just wait, do that. Wait, wait a second. So the the antecedent is there exists an x the p of x. So you've written it's true. no 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 no. I'm wait. looking at the third line. Third line. Third this line. Oh, false, okay. False. Oh, false. okay. Okay. I see. It's, okay. It's a false conditional, right? So it's, it's right. easy when to break down. Right, right, right. Possible? So, so you've created, yeah. So yeah. the fourth line is where the antecedent is uh, false. Wait, one second. Yeah. No. Well, no. The antecedent second. is true. The antecedent is true there. Yeah. Okay. Because it's a false conditional. So right. Is true. Right. Right. Consequence false. Yeah. Consequent false. Yep. Okay. Right. Yep. I got you. All right. And then I went from. I went from line, what did I do? Yeah, I went from line, I went from this line, right? Mm -hmm. For all x, not px. Um, oh, damn, did I not do that? Oh, it's false that for all x, not px, which is just saying that there's some a such that not pa, right? So that's why I say. Um, for all yeah. x, not p of x. So if did that's false, wrong? if that's false, then there is p of something it's kind of it's kind of weird because it's 
It's yeah, you've written it's yeah. false. Sorry, yeah, it's tripping me out. Okay, for all x, it's not the case that p of x. So if the antecedent there is wait, you set the antecedent of one second. So it's gonna be true if the antecedent is false. Or wait, no, but this isn't a conditional. What the well, fuck? Well what's what satisfies this? What's right. that? Yeah, so it's false the case so, that for all x not px. It's, so it's false. Sorry, it's tripping me out because it's false and there's a neg negation in there. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> it's false that for all x not p of x if there is some x that p, right? So right, exactly. Um, it's false but the way that not p a. So and then a is not a very. It's like a singular term. So you're just. Yeah. It's the equivalent of just saying there. It's almost like saying just there exists some. Well, you don't actually have an existential quantifier, but you're just right. saying, yeah, p p of this thing. It's like there is something in the domain X that p's. <laughs> right. There's a, yeah. yeah. Okay. Exactly. Okay. And um, but it's important to note, right? Um, if I had already introduced uh, a elsewhere in the tree before this, I'd have to choose a different letter here. Of course. So, yeah. Um, because. Well, yeah, because you've you've universally instantiated for s w with a already, and well, if you. But that's not if this was a true for all x not p x, then I wouldn't have to choose a different letter. <laughs> so this, um, yeah, it can be. Maybe it would be useful to write down the rules and when you have to choose a different letter or not. But uh, let's just continue going for now uh, through the okay. proof. Industry. So we get the tr uh, true PA from from that. Um, this line, what's this line eight? Yeah, yeah, line numbers would be so nice there. Yeah, actually, mm, I'm not sure how to do them in this. That's fine. Uh, that's fine. To double check it, there probably um, is a simple way. So let me just see if we go. Okay, so the fourth line is where you say the uh, antecedent is true for of the. Th of the conclusion, yeah, the conclusion's antecedent is true. The fifth line is the consequent being false, right? So that makes sense. So then, what is the sixth line? That is, uh, we're breaking down. Yeah, we're we're, we're instantiating this x, but yes, this is, right. yeah. Okay, and then the fifth line is just is kind of like you double negated or something. It's yeah, we have like false that. negation. That was one of the rules. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, okay, and uh, then the next a. line, P A, well, it's not Q of A, let me see where that's from. Okay, so that's the second line you've done something with. You just instantiated the second line there. Yes, but um, because it's a prolex, um, we can choose A even though we've already used A. Cause yes, yeah. Because it's for all X, right? So A would yeah, be anything in the domain right? you can reuse, yeah. And we, um, it would be wrong actually to do B um, here. I mean, we could, but you'd all you would also have to use A because um, because it's a letter that's always been already been used. Okay. Um, um, yeah, like I understand you could instantiate with another variable, but if you're trying to close, I just assume like you're trying to make a tree and close off branches with you know specific instantiations. If you use some other one, you might not be able to like close the branch or something. Right, I mean, in some sense, the tree should be infinitely long, right? Because you should, you should be able to. Um, you would instantiate for all x, right? So you could instantiate it for b, instantiate it for c, and so forth indefinitely. But <laughs> okay. um, you're never gonna, you won't get a contradiction there unless, uh, yeah, like some other reason to instantiate all those letters. But anyway, um, okay, so then the next ones, those are dealing with that conditional. So it's, uh, oh wait, no, are they? One second, so. Actually, is... side note, on that thought, there are some trees that can't close. Um, <laughs> that not even that can't close, but they can't finish, right? This... <laughs> but <laughs> okay, well, uh, let me just let me just focus okay. on this for right now. So, I understand that uh, P A implies not Q A. You've just you've instantiated that second line. So then, mm -hmm. after that, not R A. I, I see. I don't know where you got that from, though. Line four. Oh, line four. Oh, okay. Wait, but why did you? Why did you do that? 
Sorry. Why? Sorry. Why are? Why would we do that? Um. Well, I could have. I could have done this line earlier. If it doesn't. But it's the order doesn't really matter. That I just. Much. I don't understand where that came from. So this line, the true not our right comes from the fourth line here. He's uh, saying for all x, not our x, right? which means that if we have we have a, so so not our a. This has to be true. Okay, I don't quite understand why we did that, but okay. And then you just well, double negate it again, or you you yeah, okay. Yeah. Then uh, let's see. It might be useful to write out the rules like this for here, but whatever. Yeah. Um, That's okay. Um, yeah, and then. Sorry, two not you, so also. then you you're just dealing with all of the conditionals here now, or all the connectives or whatever. So this is the conditional here. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, here. yeah, you it's right. So if the antecedent is false, then yeah, we've got PA somewhere up there already. I assume. Where's yeah PA mm -hmm. right? So that that closes that branch. Then mm -hmm. the consequent being. Uh, true we don't have that closed off so we move to the next conditional that we want to uh yeah deal with so so this we the negation so we get false qa all right oh you you i didn't so that yeah okay it was just that negation thing again okay mm -hmm. and then you dealt with the next conditional i assume where's that finally we deal with the first premise yeah. right 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 okay so it's false. Okay, right. So on the left, we have where the antecedent is false, mm -hmm. and there exists an x such that p of x, and then um, what do you have below that? It's like you. Um, it's like an instantiation kind of thing. Wait one sec. Existential. You yeah. You instantiated that existential claim, right? That's what it looks right. like there. Okay. And the then, point is, if this was a true exists x p x, um, I would have to say true p b, because I don't know that um, it's going to be that the a I've used before is also going to be the case such that p of a. I know that some x is going to be such that p x. Um, so I'd, I I have to just assume a different letter. I mean, um, Whereas when the false existential means there's just no x such that p of x, which means I can apply for a because a is something. yeah right. But, it's false that there exists an x such that p of x, but then right. So that would be false if p of a is true and p and you have p a up there. Okay, gotcha. Right, because it's if you're saying it's not the case that there exists one of these things, and then you're just saying there exists one of them. Okay. Right. And then the other um, side we had. Yeah, that's the other side of the first line where the consequent is true. Right, okay. So for all x, q of x and r of x, so you just universally instantiate q of a or r of a. And then you applied the rule for disjunction, um, mm -hmm. which is, yeah, if, if either of those are true. And we have both of them negated above. So yeah, I understand the uh, the general structure of what's happening there. I can tell that I don't have a good enough grasp that I would move through it smoothly. So I probably need to just generate a bunch of these and do some practice. But I think I think I have a good general idea of what you're going through here. Three. Yeah. Okay. I think for now I'm gonna work with this, but you'll hear from me again because I want to understand how it works with modal logic and I want to uh, sure up my understanding of how it works with first order logic so I'm going to fuck around sure. with it a bit and then you'll uh, you'll hear back from me sounds good cool thanks so much I really do appreciate that we also need to talk about eliminativism about normativity at some point sure <laughs> <laughs> okay alright cool thanks Troy no worries